Okay, so let's begin with the first agenda item, which is an introduction of IOFI. Now, if I were to describe IOFI in just one sentence, I would say that IOFI is a not-for-profit organization which develops standards for the global Islamic finance industry. So there are basically three components to this equation. The first component is that IOFI is a not-for-profit organization, which means that the work that we do is not driven by profit motive, and it's only done for, this, for the best interest of the industry at large. Okay, that's the first. The second thing is to do with the fact that we develop standards. And more specifically, when we say that we develop standards, what we mean to say is that we clearly define what's the minimum requirement as well as the best practice in the fields of Sharia, accounting, auditing, governance, and ethics. So that's point number two. And point number three is that we develop standards for the global Islamic finance industry, not just a single country or a group of countries or not just a region or a group of regions, but for the entire Islamic finance industry. And moreover, we, we develop standards for all the sectors of Islamic finance, be it the banking sector, the takaful, or the insurance sector, or the capital markets. So this is, in a nutshell, a description of what IOV is and what it does. Okay, there are six founding members and about 140 active institutional members representing not less than 37 countries. Okay, so these are the organizations which founded IOFI and there are some organizations which are supporting IOFI on an ongoing long-term continuing basis by being an institutional member. Now this is an important slide and I just want to make two very important points here. The first point is that, you know, I said earlier that we develop standards in five areas, Sharia, accounting, auditing, governance, and ethics. Now, you might be led to believe that these are independent areas of standard setting. That is, these are all independent, distinct, and disconnected with each other. You know, but nothing could be further away from the truth. These are not independent areas of standard setting, but rather these are interdependent, interlinked, interconnected with each other, such that one area of standard setting actually complements and value adds another area of standard, uh, standard setting. And the second point I want to make is, and this is quite important also, um, is that if you want to master Islamic finance, and I'm sure that you want to, then the starting point of all your knowledge, knowledge base and skill set, irrespective of which profession you belong to. I mean, you could be a Sharia scholar or an accountant or a risk management specialist. Whatever the profession may be, you should first master these five areas of standard setting and the 112 odd standards that we have issued in these areas over the last 30 years or so. In other words, what I'm actually trying to say is that in order for you to become a master of Islamic finance, you will need to master the AOFI standards issued in these five areas specifically. Now, you might be thinking as to whether AOFI standards are actually adopted by any country or regulatory jurisdiction in the world. Um, the fact is that the AOFI standards are most definitely adopted and adapted and referred to by many jurisdictions in many countries. Uh, from the slide, you can see for yourself that there are 31 countries and 35 regulatory jurisdictions which recognize Sharia standards. Uh, there are 35 countries and 43 regulatory jurisdictions, sorry, 36 countries and 43 regulatory jurisdictions which recognize the accounting standards and 35 Yes, 35 um, countries and 40 regulatory jurisdictions which recognize the governance standards. Now, this has important implications for you. If a country recognizes IFE standards, then, it, then it's clear and it's obvious that there will be demand for AOFI fellows in that respective country. And as the adoption rate and the recognition rate increases in that, in, in that respective country, 
or in other countries, the demand for UV fellows will continue to increase. And this can be or should be one of the reasons why you should get an IOF fellowship or an IOF certificate, because these fellowships and these certificates will open doors of career opportunities for you, inshallah, in different parts of the world. Islamic finance learning made simple and memorable.